Smartphone technology has been growing faster than most people could have ever imagined, especially in terms of smartphone cameras. We can already see consumer camera sales going down with the rise of the smartphone era, with many people realizing that smartphone cameras are now good enough to get the job done. With iPhone 8 and 10, we are now seeing some camera features that are only available on a small amount of high-end cameras, namely 4K 60p video recording, but they don't come cheap. You'll be paying at least $2,000 for a high-end camera that can shoot 4K 60p and at least $5,500 for the cheapest Canon camera with that feature. iPhones and other smartphones are undoubtedly the mainstream camera of the future, so here's 5 tips on how to shoot better video on your iPhone. The first tip is really simple. Stop shooting video vertically. There are now some apps that are properly utilizing vertical video, but even if the app you're currently using does, remember that not all apps do, and in that case there will be a black frame covering most of the video. The best part about shooting horizontally is that pretty much all apps support full screen video and landscape mode, and you won't have any issues showing your videos off on a TV or a computer screen. So always remember to flip your phone sideways before you start recording. Next up is choosing your settings wisely. It's remarkable that the latest iPhone 8 and 10 can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second. It gives incredibly smooth motion and it can be slowed down for an awesome slow-mo effect, while keeping the ultra sharp 4K resolution. The issue is that shooting in 60p requires a higher shutter speed to keep motion looking smooth, but that in turn requires more light. In low light situations, the shutter speed could be lowered, the quality can get worse, or the video will just be too dark compared to shooting at 30 frames per second. So if you're not planning on slowing down the video and you find yourself in a low light situation, just switch to 4K 30, it'll save storage space as well. Third, be strategic with your lens choices. The iPhone X is the first iPhone with optical image stabilization on both of its lenses. This means that we no longer get really shaky footage while using the telephoto lens. On previous dual lens iPhones, it may be worth to shoot with the wide lens and use digital zoom instead. Although the image quality goes down, at least you don't have a bunch of camera shake in your footage. Now if you've got something like a smartphone gimbal that could stabilize the footage, the telephoto lens will look a lot smoother. It also gives a different look compared to the wide lens. It has less distortion, which is known for making people on the edge of the frame look wider. The longer lens also increases the amount of background compression, providing a more pleasing image when recording people or objects. On the other hand, if you want to show off a background or are shooting in low light conditions, go with the wide lens. Another way to shoot better video is to use a stabilizer. Now you can use a tripod or monopod for static footage, but our favorite option is a gimbal since you're free to move around while recording. This is the best option for vlogging and recording things like skateboarding videos for example. These used to cost tens of thousands of dollars when they were introduced for high-end cameras, but now we have great phone gimbal options like the Xiaoyun Smooth Q for only about $100. With a bit of practice, you could get some smooth shots with cinematic motion. You could choose to shoot in 24 frames per second for that cinematic style, or shoot in 4K 60 and slow it down for some pretty awesome shots. The Smooth Q can even control and charge your phone while you're using it. The fifth and final tip is to use a third-party app. While Apple's app does a great job for regular shooting, the settings constantly change, especially if you're using a gimbal. The white balance and exposure can constantly change while moving around, which can easily ruin some shots. With a third party app, you can set those settings manually. One of our favorites is ProMovie, which offers a ton of controls for only $2.99. To manually set the white balance so your colors don't shift while recording, tap the white balance button near the bottom of the UI, then choose the option that fits your lighting conditions. If you don't know which one to use, try each one and then choose the one that correctly represents white the best. You can also fine tune the white balance by using the slider on the right side of the UI. Just make sure true tone is off before doing so. If you want to lock the exposure, just tap on an object and then hit the lock button. If the image looks too bright or dark, you can use the slider to fine tune it, which will adjust both the shutter speed and ISO. You can also adjust them independently by tapping on each option. When in brightly lit conditions, set the ISO to the lowest setting and adjust the exposure by using the shutter speed. This will reduce noise in your footage. In low light, set the shutter speed no lower than the frames per second you're shooting in and adjust your exposure by using the ISO setting. If you're planning on shooting in 4K 60p and slowing down your footage, always make sure your shutter speed is at least twice your frame rate or else the video will have too much motion blur. If you tap on the resolution settings, you can adjust your video bitrate to a much higher 120 megabit per second, which is up to four times as much as the standard Apple camera app records in. This will increase the video quality by reducing the amount of compression, but at the same time take up a lot more storage space. We suggest maxing the setting out when shooting at 4K 60p and setting it to 50 megabit per second when shooting at 4K 30p. If you have a lot of extra storage space, you can also max that out as well. ProMovie has way more options to use, and if you're very serious with video, check out the Filmic Pro app, which comes in at $15, but offers other shooting options such as log shooting for the best dynamic range you can get. 
Try these tips out and let us know in the comment section below which one really helped you shoot better video on your iPhone. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.